a leap through time, Paul Dianac's journey into 3906 AD. Paul Amadeus Dianac was born in Zurich, Switzerland in the year 1884. He was a humble and unassuming man with an insatiable curiosity about existence's mysteries. Paul was a teacher by profession, dedicating his life to knowledge pursuit and the enrichment of young minds. Neither did he know that his own mind would become a vessel for an unprecedented journey through time. In 1917, Dianac suffered from encephalitis lethargica, a strange neurological disease that attacks the brain, leaving some victims in a statue-like condition, speechless and motionless. This is more commonly known as the sleeping illness that plunged him into a coma that lasted for a year. There was a small epidemic in Europe that was mainly present between 1916 and 1924. Those who caught the disease were placed in comas for long periods of time. Those who were unlucky never woke up from a coma. Dienach's life took an extraordinary turn in 1921. His illness worsened when he fell asleep for a year. His physical body lay dormant while his consciousness embarked on an enigmatic odyssey. When he wakes up, he's in a hospital room with different people dressed in unfamiliar clothing and speaking an unfamiliar language. Being a language teacher, he understands a few words in English and Swedish. Dinark tries to convey his message, but nobody understands him. One of the doctors understands his language. The doctor tries his best to communicate himself in fragmented German. He tells Dienach his name is actually Andreas Northam, a famous physics professor who had an accident. Dienach is still baffled by the doctor's revelation of his identity. He still believes he was just a typical language teacher from Switzerland. One of the doctors reacts to the word Switzerland, and someone asks him what year it is. Dienach answers it's 1922. Seconds later, a senior physician comes forward and tells Dianosh that the year is actually 3906. At first, Dianach didn't believe what the doctor conveyed to him. However, as he glanced through the open blinds of the hospital window, he could clearly see buildings reaching through the clouds. Vehicles that seemed to defy gravity bustled quickly past his window. Dianach couldn't believe what he saw. He was utterly overwhelmed and eventually passed out. After three days, he eventually recovers. He portrays the walls as minted with crystals that give you an in-depth view of the landscape. Objects are made of pastel-colored luminous metal that's fiery to the touch. He is now then led through a corridor to a large room where he meets two older men in white robes. At first, Dianac thinks they're actually priests or kings, but they're actually called electors. These are like elder wise men. Dienach's doctors still didn't think that he was from the past. They thought he was suffering from some kind of brain trauma. But after questioning him for a while, the electors do believe him. They have knowledge of a rare psychic phenomenon that they call a consciousness shift, where someone's mind or soul could be transported into somebody else's body. And they think that's what occurred to Dienach when Andreas Northam, whose body was being occupied by Dienach, was crippled in an accident. He was clinically dead for 15 minutes. Doctors dropped the temperature of his brain and they were able to restart his heart at that point. The electors believed that this personality shift occurred and the mind of Paul Dienach was transmitted into the body of Andreas Northam 2,000 years in the future. The electors further explained that time isn't linear and that everyone's consciousness exists all the time and almost everywhere. Even though this is a rare event, it is something that's known to happen. Please like and share, turn on the notification bell to get more exciting Tragic Diaries story.